Hello everyone, welcome to another Mr. CFT training. Today we are going to simulate the airflow close to a Darius wind turbine and we are going to do it using ANSYS Fluent software. So let's begin. By clicking on the subscribe button, you will be informed about the newest CFT training videos by Mr. CFT. Or if you are watching the training video, click on the Mr. CFT logo and subscribe. So as depicted in this slide, our geometry of interest is depicted in this figure. However, if we are going to simulate the airflow adjacent to this geometry, what we are going to do is to create two zones to represent the rotary zone and the static zone. And we are going to place our wind turbine inside the rotary zone in order to make sure that we are going to inflict the blade's rotation inside our computational domain. So as shown in this slide, our computational domain consists of various boundary conditions such as inlet, outlet, our blades walls, and also the symmetry walls covers our bigger static rectangular domain. So the reason that we're going to use symmetry boundary condition has nothing to do with the symmetric nature of this uh, problem since there are no symmetric, na uh, no symmetric condition in this problem. However, since we have no boundary condition for the domain that covers our uh, blades, we're going to model or put our symmetric walls so far from our computational domain that we're going to make sure that these walls are going to feel none of the variations that the, our that our wind turbines created. So what happens is that since these walls are not going to feel the variations inside our domain, their gradients are going to be zero. And interestingly, the symmetry boundary condition inflicts a zero gradient of our variables. So what we're going to do is to use our the symmetry condition to inflict that our walls that are far from our rotary zone are not going to feel anything about our domain. So their variables such as velocity and pressure are going to be zero gradient condition. After we've generated our computational domain, what we're going to do is to create our mesh. So for our mesh, we've generated tetrahedral elements for the core of our domain and we've used prism layers or uh, prism elements for our boundary layers close to our walls. And, we, and it is significantly important to create a high quality mesh so that our results and the stability of our solution would not pose difficulties during the simulation. If display mesh button is selected, the Fluent software allows us to display each surface of our computational domain individually and also there are various options given for us to select the colors, to observe the edge of the mesh and even our mesh nodes if such needed arise. Also important setups such as solver type must be selected in the general tab. While pressure based solvers are usually employed for most CFT simulations, the density-based solvers could be selected if a compressible gas with a Mach number above 2 is the objective of the study. Also, the user must specify if the simulation is steady state or transient. Finally, it has been allowed to select the gravitational acceleration and specify both value and direction in the general tab for the user to complete. However, the user could change the gravitational acceleration in the operation tab inside the boundary condition section. So for a variety of aerodynamic simulations, what happens in the real world physics is an incompressible isothermal fluid flow with a turbulent nature. And in order to implement this in our computational software, what we are going to do is to go to viscous tab and select an appropriate turbulence model. Afterwards, we're going to select a material that represents the material in our domain 
and then we're going to continue the simulation but as you go through the, these menus what you're going to see is that there are variety of turbulence modeloid for our problem these models have been sorted out from low accuracy to extremely high accuracy models regarding the low accuracy models such as parallel Almeyer's model which solves only one equation to represent the turbulency of the flow to the LES simulation that solves large eddies inside the problem but again how could we choose an appropriate turbulence model so for aerodynamic problems it has been found that k epsilon models are going to act poorly close to the walls also high accurate models such as LES, DES and even SAS models are going to cost us huge computational load since they require intensive amounts of mesh in this regards the two appropriate models that has been used in aerodynamic applications are the spallot almeras and k omega family of models however it has been found that spallot almeras model might lead to overestimation of turbulence production close to the walls and again acts poorly for high strain flows so spallot almeras model could be used for initial stage of solution in order to improve the convergence however it could not be employed as the primary model to calculate fluid flow results so what we are going to stick with is the k omega models however inside the k omega family of models it has been found that sst k omega or sst variation known as shear stress transport is the most efficient model for calculating both near wall effects and the core flow effect and for this reason we're going to stick with the k omega ssd variation of k omega models also ansys fluent offers variety of remedies such as production limiters in order to improve the model's performance if the situation required and for the cases that a valid experimental values exist the user could also go through and change the model coefficients in order to capture the best performance of k omega ssd and other models inside the ansys fluent so as a summary we're going to select k omega ssd for this problem and since isothermal condition has been considered no further variation and remedy has been involved however if we had experimental values we could have used the models coefficient and alter them to fit the CFT results with the experimental values so after describing our physical model through the model tab what we're going to do next is to select an appropriate material that could represent the physical material of the domain of interest so in this problem as we've discussed before an isothermal incompressible fluid flow has been considered so what we're going to do next is to go to the material tab and since air has already been saved in the ANSYS library of materials what we're going to do is just to select the air and modify the density and viscosity variable to match our problem it must be noted that if energy equation was considered other parameters such as thermal conductivity and specific heat could have been modified inside this panel
To do so, we simply right click on the report definition and select the drag out of the options. Afterwards, what we are going to do is to select the wall that we want to calculate the drag on it and the direction of the flow that encounters the wall that we want to calculate the drag. We could also specify to write these values into the files or to plot the values during the solution. Also, an interested user could dive in and see the options and parameters that the report definitions could deliver during the iterations. So by following the exact steps through the described pattern, the one last thing that we are going to discuss will be the solution initialization and run calculation tab. So what solution initialization means is that we pre-allocate the variable to some value that might be suitable to start the simulation. These initializations are in fact the guesses or the initial approximations of the results that we have allocated for the cells. So the closer the values to the final results, better convergence and lower computational load would be imposed. Fluent software offers two methods for the initializations of the variables. The first method, known as hybrid method, solves a Poisson equation to calculate the variables from boundaries. On the other hand, in the standard initialization, we use specified variables from inlets or desired variables in order to initialize our variables. For aerodynamic or turbo machinery simulations, it is advised to use standard initialization with inlet values for high speed flows and use hybrid method for low Reynolds problems. For this problem, we use standard initializations as an instance and also we use inlet values to allocate our velocity and turbulent variables. Also, in the run calculation tab, we specify the maximum number of iterations for our simulation to proceed. However, if the convergence have been reached, the solution progress will be stopped automatically. Beside the maximum iteration or maximum iteration per time step value that we need to be selected each time step, what we're going to do is to know how long we're going to simulate this problem. And for this problem, we desire to simulate five seconds of this rotation. So what we're going to do is to specify 5,000 number of time steps in order to make sure that during these time steps, five seconds of this problem has been simulated. Finally, after the integrity of the result has been confirmed through either residuals or with the help of some other solution monitors, what we are going to do next is to observe the results and further investigate the phenomena at hand. In order to do that, we could either use the Fluent software or we could export the result to other softwares such as TechPlot, CFDPost, or Ensight. To check our results, variety of options has been implemented inside the Fluent software such as contours, streamlines, and vectors. In this study, we're going to check what contours values could offer. So, to watch the results on a contour and to observe our results variation in a contour, what we're going to need is a plane or a surface in which the contour could be evaluated. So, if we're going to see or observe our results in the middle of our domain, we need to create a plane on that section. And to create a plane, we go to the surface panel, we right click on the surface panel, and we create our desired plane based on variety of tools. Afterwards, we could use that plane in the contour section and we could create our desired results. In this study, the velocity magnitude could be a good representative of our results. 
So what we're going to do is to go to the velocity panel and inside the velocity panel we check the velocity magnitude in the desired plane. Also we could observe other parameters such as pressure on our turbine walls and to do so we simply go to the pressure panel and we chose static pressure on our wind turbine wall. And finally to check whether our boundary layers were accurate close to our walls we could also we could also check our y plus values on the wind turbine walls So that is all and I hope you've enjoyed this simulation and understand the basis of the aerodynamic and turbo machinery simulations. To further simplify the setups, a brief guideline of the settings that we've been through in this study is presented in the below table and I hope you could and I hope you would recreate this geometry or the simplified version of this geometry and carry out the simulation that has been discussed here and have an awesome CFD experience. Thank you for your attention and good luck. Obtain the mesh file and also the full training movie by purchasing this product. To benefit from Mr. CFD services such as training, consultation or simulation, you can always come at info at and contact our expert. Thank you and good luck.